I was not ready for that whatsoever. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder, and today's Backlog Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. If you're new around here, on Wednesdays, we pull from the backlog to talk about things that don't fit within the rest of the week. Last year, I tried to make a point to watch as many new movies as possible. And well, I kind of failed. There are still plenty of movies from 2018 that are still on my watch list, but it's all good because I'm slowly making my way through that backlog. Anyways though, there was one of these movies that's a little less talked about, and that's the movie Blaine. He said, oh, Why didn't you pick you me for that part? That Why did you pick her? Let me lay you, down. you know she was in a psych ward for like six months, right? Blame is the psychological drama directorial debut from Quinn Shepard about a taboo relationship between a student with some sort of mental illness and her teacher. It's a little weird, but we'll get into that a bit. What's especially impressive is that Quinn Shepard not only directed and wrote the film, but she's also the lead actress as well as the editor. She, she also ended up funding most of this film with part of her college fund after an investor stepped out. And she did this at the age of 22. I'm 23 now. In other words, I need to get my shit together. What appears to be a traditional coming of age story at first so clearly ends up being something completely different. Blaine follows Abigail, a high school girl who was committed into an insane asylum for some reasons. We don't actually know what those reasons are, but this is the return back to high school. Almost immediately, Abigail makes an enemy with the school's mean girl, Melissa, when she is casted into a school play as the lead. This play being The Crucible, whose main character is also named Abigail, with both Abigails basically being ostracized from social circles. This story isn't just about a high school play though, it's about a relationship that ends up forming between Abigail and her drama teacher Jeremy. Now what was strange about this relationship, well everything about it is strange and it's so obviously wrong, but it's weird because of the way it occurs. The main male lead in The Crucible who is supposed to work with Abigail ends up giving her the cold shoulder and again she's ostracized from her peers, but Jeremy the drama teacher decides to step in and work with her because she's a really good actress and he doesn't want her to waste her potential because of another student's actions. It makes enough sense on paper, he's a teacher, he wants what's best for his students, he played the role in college, so he knows it very well, and he wants to give Abigail a chance to succeed with her talents. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is that they end up having chemistry with each other. They end up practicing after school, they end up kissing, and, and that's where it gets weird. However, that's about as far as it goes. Jeremy realized that he's made a mistake here, yet there's no real scandal involved in the movie until the very end, and it's not even based off of this taboo relationship, it's something completely different that I don't want to mention because spoilers. It, it, it's, it's weird because it's like there's this taboo relationship, but it really doesn't actually go anywhere. What Blame ends up being is almost a study into the psyche of this kind of relationship, especially since it is written by Quinn, a 22 year old woman who wrote the screenplay in high school rather than some 30 year old man who's trying to live out some sick twisted fantasy. It makes a weird and quite disturbing premise actually interesting and fortunately it never goes any further than, than being just interesting. As far as the technical aspects of Blame, it's really solid. All of the leads have great performances, they're super believable in their roles. There's a couple of side characters that felt weirdly placed, but it never really takes away from the film. I love the direction and editing especially. The pacing allows for some scenes in the later half of the film to make you feel a bit uneasy because you're not quite sure where it's going to go, almost like it's hallucinatory. Blame is a bit more on the shorter side, clocking in at a little over an hour and a half, which makes its length feel more like a teen coming of age story. But like I said, with the pacing and the plot, it showcases a different side of a teenager's mind. The only thing that I would criticize Blame for is that there are certain key plot points that just kind of disappear. Like the fact that Abigail is supposed to be mentally ill. There's some reason she was in an insane asylum before the movie, but what is that illness? It never comes across as anything particularly debilitating, but why do students call her Sybil? There's nothing in the film that made me believe that she had disassociative identity disorder or anything similar like that. 
But even with small things like that, the movie still does such a great job of leaving certain things ambiguous, including its abrupt ending. Overall, Blame is a solid film that I really enjoyed and I'm looking forward to rewatching it. Keeping in mind that this is the directorial debut of a 22 year old, it's crazy how it's not only just a good film for someone in their 20s, but it's also a very competent film in general and something that I would definitely recommend. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Humble Bundle Monthly. We all want brand new games at a cheap price without doing any work. Well, there's never been an easier way than with Humble Bundle Monthly. On the first Friday of every month, you'll get a brand new bundle of great games to add to your Steam library for only $12. Last month, subscribers got Just Cause 3, Project Cars 2, and 7 other games. With Humble Monthly, you also get access to the Humble Trove with over 60 other DRM free games you can download straight to your computer and play anytime, as well as an extra 10% off on the rest of the Humble store as long as you're subscribed. By the way, they just introduced Nintendo games here, so 10% off Nintendo games equals a win-win for me. There's four different options to subscribe. You can either choose the traditional $12 a month, but if you decide to sign up for three months at a time, you can save an extra $1. If you sign up for six months at a time, you can save an extra $5. And if you decide to sign up for the entirety of the next year, you can get an entire month for free. If you subscribe right now, you can go ahead and unlock the February bundle with Yakuza 0, Tom Clancy's The Division, and Rapture Rejects, with more on the way soon. But hurry up, because this offer ends on February 1st, with a new batch of games taking its place for March. Check out the details in the link below, and if you decide to sign up, you'll also be supporting your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like the video, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know what other 2018 movies you'd like me to cover. I have a couple of others planned very soon, along with all of the best picture nominees. Those will be B-Sides episodes, so get ahead for that. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Blame is, if you've already seen it. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.